Hi, and thanks for tuning in. This is Val Hunter, your host on this new monthly video series, where I'm going to showcase some of the items that I collect and provide a little history on them. The stories behind our collections are a key reason why many of us collect, and so I hope you enjoy the discussion and see or learn something new. In episode one, I will show you some unique items, and if you like the segment, be sure to subscribe and click that bell so that you're notified for future episodes. I'd like to start with a special thank you to Winning Image Photography for creating the great intro that you're about to see, and you can find her channel in the link below in the description. So sit back, enjoy, and thanks for watching. Checking in to share some ideas on the topic of things in your collection that you might sell or that you might not sell. I was talking back and forth with some of the guys around the tube and Silver Dragons had to put out a video about things that he would never sell from his collection. And then Silver Bean Counter followed that up with a video that was similar. And, you know, of course you get gifts from people, but I kind of commented and said, look, at the end of the day, everything's for sale. I mean, you've got things you collect and sure there's things with sentimental value that you might hold on to, but for the right price, I mean, a lot of us do this because we're hedging against inflation or because it's been a way to have a savings account other than just watching the bank numbers roll over. So that kind of brought me to thinking about what would I not get rid of? And um, this bag is an interesting piece that I picked up along the way in my collecting and this would probably be towards the top of the list of things that I would hold on to but more because there's a story behind it I mean look if the price was right I would even let go of this so to me it's more of a question of what the price would be before you'd sell than if you would or not but what's in this envelope represents what this silver certificate used to be backed by back in the day uh, our currency like this $20 note was backed, and this is a gold certificate, and it was backed by gold, $20 worth. You could walk into a bank, this is a series of 28, you could hand this to the teller and they would hand you a $20 gold coin up until 33. And uh, similarly, after that, you could walk into the bank and you could exchange this, which is a silver certificate. This one is a star note, and it's a funny back, but you could trade this into the teller if you didn't really care what was printed on the serial numbers. That didn't have any special meaning to you. You could turn that into the teller and they would give you a silver dollar like this in exchange for that. And this actually is 0.773 troy ounces of silver in a Morgan dollar. And so what that equates to, if you were to look at what you would trade that in for from a dollar standpoint, it would be $1.2929 for one ounce of silver or one silver certificate dollar for a silver dollar, which contained 0.773 troy ounces of silver. So people would walk in and they would trade, and they would get their silver dollar, which was actual and real value. And up until March of 1964, you could walk in and get one of these. Something happened in March of 1964 that changed the circulation of our silver certificates. They began to not be backed by silver. And in fact, you'd be able to trade these for fiat currency. But a law was enacted in 1964 that if from March until June 24th of 1968, which was the deadline, and it's a special day, June 24th, 1968, because from that day forward, you would only be able to exchange these dollars for fiat currency. In the past, you would have been able to get actual silver. As a holder of 
one of these silver certificates, you were able to walk in from March of 64 to June 24th of 68 to a U.S. assay office facility and exchange these for silver pellets. If you had a lot of silver certificates, they would trade you for large bars that didn't have any stamping on them at all. I've read about people that traded in hundreds of these and the bars that they received in all cases did not have any markings on them. Specifically, some folks that redeemed from 66 to 67, uh, Ron Gillio, who's a senior numismatist for Stax Bowers, said that he went in from 66 and 67 and traded a bunch of these certificates in and would get no weight, no fineness, bars with no numbers stamped on them in exchange. And the, the weight in ounces would be written on the bar with a black grease pencil. <laughs> if you can imagine that. If you came in with just $1 or just a few dollars, you might get a plastic baggie from San Francisco or New York, which were the two assay offices where you could do these exchanges. Or you might get something like this with a $1 stamped on it. Inside this envelope, what you would find would be silver. And this is what it would look like. So you would get your $1 envelope in exchange for your $1 silver certificate from March of 64 through June of 68, June 24th. And it would be basically silver shot. That's what this is. And what's interesting about this is the weight of it was exactly the same silver weight that's in this Morgan dollar. There's 0.773 approximately troy ounces of pure silver right here in granules and that's the same weight that is in this morgan silver dollar and that was what was backing this currency before it went fully fiat <laughs> on june the 25th of 1968. so june 25th is an interesting date i think that if we talk about where our dollars are today and we look at the economy and everything that goes on it's nice to hearken back to a time when currency had real value because it was backed by something with real value. So it's a pretty cool piece to have in my collection because I think it represents really well why we do what we do as collectors and as stackers. We're looking to find things of value. We're, we're looking to hunt value. That's the name of my channel. And uh, so give me your comments down below, guys. Tell me what you think. If you just find this stuff cool, if this was in your collection, would you be looking to sell it? Maybe you'd be looking to sell one of these. I would say that I could probably get more for this star note silver certificate today in the collectible market than I could for these silver granules. I just thought I'd post this up and just share my collection, some things that you may not see often or otherwise, just kind of share some ideas. So give me your thoughts and comments down below and tell me what you think. Until next time, this is Value Hunter. And I'm signing out.